first, live, local. This is Fox 12 Now. Hello, everyone. I'm Greg Dibbler. This is Fox 12 Now. Thank you for joining us. Wherever you are, we do appreciate it. We're live streaming here every weekday, starting at 1 p.m. and going throughout the afternoon, covering a wide range of topics. And sometimes those things are things that are happening right now, breaking news or things that everyone is discussing here in the Northwest. And that has to do with something that started yesterday. As you can see by the lower third there, what is causing the mystery smell? That is a big question on a lot of people's minds. So in case you don't know, here's just a little recap of what happened. This is coming from the Cowlitz County Emergency Management. Uh, they said that around 6.30 p.m. yesterday, that's Tuesday, September uh, 24th, about 6.30 p.m., they started uh, receiving phone calls about a mysterious smell. This, uh, the source of the odor, they do not know. This has been investigated for a while. There's been a number of different uh, things as far as how, what people smelled, whether it smelled like onions, maybe they thinking it was a gas leak. So far, as of right now, as of this live stream, it has not been identified. But one of the questions that people had is, is it of volcanic origin? You're near Mount St. Helens there. Could that be related to this? Could it be related to potential earthquakes? There's, there's a lot that goes on there. And what we wanted to do is bring on an expert to talk about this. And that's who's joining us right now. We have Peter Kelly, research geologist with the USGS and the Cascades Volcano Observatory. And Peter, thank you for joining us here. Um, I just ran through a bunch of different scenarios right there. Obviously, everybody's trying to figure out what is going on here with this and, and determine the source. So to ask you directly, is the source of this odor from a volcanic origin? No. <laughs> there we go. The interview's over. Uh, so, <laughs> so, so it is not. So, so, from can you tell me just a little bit more detail too about how you go about investigating something like this to determine if this could be a potential, potentially related somehow to to volcanic sources? Yeah, absolutely. And first things first is it a volcanic gas that's a great idea because volcanoes can be pretty smelly right and so volcanoes are well known for emitting things like sulfur dioxide and hydrogen sulfide which have very very acrid or rotten egg very strong smells and so we monitor mount st helens very carefully uh, with two real-time monitoring stations one is actually located inside the crater um, from the last eruption, uh, from the 2004 to 2008 eruption. And that measures things like water vapor, carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and hydrogen sulfide, the four main volcanic gases. Then we have another station located outside the crater that tells us how much gas is emitted. And both of those systems are showing baseline levels. Um, it's actually not emitting any sulfur dioxide. It hasn't emitted sulfur dioxide since the last eruption. And so Mount St. Helens right now today is only emitting very small amounts of water vapor, carbon dioxide, and a tiny, tiny amount of hydrogen sulfide. So that's all that's coming out of that mountain as far as what you're, you're monitoring right there. And just to ask this, just to, to clarify these questions that I'm sure some other people will ask, is it possible that this is another fissure somewhere away from Mount St. Helens that could be related to volcanic activity that's just not being monitored? Uh, anything's possible, uh, but Mount St. Helens is a very well monitored system. And so there's dozens of seismometers around. And so if a fissure was going to come up and erupt, that would cause ground shaking and, and rocks to break and crack. And that would generate seismic waves, which would be detected. Um, typically, when magma makes its way to the surface, it will also deform the crust. And Mount St. Helens has a large number of um, GPS sensors that monitor deformation. And so all of those are showing background levels of activity. Furthermore, instruments are great, but people are better. And we had field crews out yesterday in the crater and all around the mountain that didn't notice anything unusual. And so that's a lot of different ways to verify that. And from what, what I do understand too, Mount St. Helens is one of the most monitored volcanoes in the world as far as uh, people monitoring it and all of these different systems that you have there in place. So uh, assuming then, and, and it sounds pretty positive that this is not of volcanic origin uh, from for this, should something be from volcanic origin? And I know you, we don't know what the actual origin is right now, so that's part of the mystery of this. Uh, but uh, ruling out volcanic origin, if this were to be volcanic odors or gases, what would people notice and what would be some of the telltale signs that people could watch out for? Yeah, that's a great question. And uh, there's a lot of examples kind of through history where one of the first things people notice when a volcano like Mount St. Helens wakes up is kind of a rotten egg smell. And so that's a hydrogen sulfide. 
And there's a bunch of reasons for that. But one of the best reasons is that your nose and most people's noses are really sensitive to H2S. And so, for example, the average human nose can sense about 10 to 100 parts per billion of H2S in the atmosphere. So that's why, you know, sewer gas, things like that, other, other natural gases that contain H2S, that's why people find them so offensive. And volcanoes also can emit H2S. And so uh, in some cases, uh, people may notice something like a, an odd smell coming from a volcano. And sometimes that does turn out to be significant. But this time, as, as we mentioned, with all of the monitoring, that this is not the case. What else do you think people should be aware of when it comes to just in general, when it comes to the volcano, as far as any other gas emissions or uh, emissions in general, even if it's not H2S, when it, when it comes to Mount St. Helens? Yeah, and this is where gas, ga measuring gas emissions is really important. Um, smelling gases is great, but one of the main indicators of early unrest is actually volcanic carbon dioxide emissions. And so carbon dioxide, it's odorless, it's colorless. And so on the one hand, smelling H2S can be a great indicator that a volcano is waking up, but sometimes a volcano wakes up and it's emitting carbon dioxide instead. And so people may not notice that. And so that's where the instrumentation comes in. And so with a volcano like Mount St. Helens, where there's people fairly nearby, uh, we would expect people to perhaps smell something. And if they don't, the instruments will really tell us what we need to know. And going to that instrumentation too, and all of the different monitoring devices you have on there, another speculation that people had was that it could be earthquake related, that maybe this is a sign of an earthquake or some kind of activity, seismic activity. And with all of those instruments, I'm assuming you monitor seismic activity as well. And have you noticed anything with that? That's a great question. We monitor uh, all these parameters 24 seven, seven days a week. And uh, I just checked actually the seismic data before coming on and it's actually very quiet right now. And so there's, there, there has been a brief uptick in earthquakes for the last several months. Um, and there's been some information statements that have gone out about that. Um, but it's really low level activity that's related to background, normal things that volcanoes do. Fluids move around, there can be small magma uh, recharge events. All of this is within the realm of normal activity. And there's nothing that's really capturing our attention enough to consider uh, changing an alert level or um, communicating something more significant. Yeah, so just to clarify what you just said there for anybody out there who's wondering about all of those earthquakes, and I know that we've covered it on here, that, so that is not a sign of an impending eruption, at least necessarily according to the USGS. That's right. Okay. Um, anything else that you think is important for people to know about this as we try to determine the, the source of this, this mystery, but uh, uh, volcanoes in general? Sure, um, that we are a resource. If people have uh, questions, um, they can reach out over social media. They can email us at uh, askcvo at usgs.gov. The Cascades Volcano Observatory has a website where you can get more information. And so we really welcome uh, the chance to talk about the Pacific Northwest's volcanoes. Uh, they're amazing. Lots of people recreate on them. Scientifically, they're incredible. And so they're really just something that we're passionate about. And we really want everybody to uh, you know, be curious and to ask questions. Well, Peter, thank you very much for joining here so that I could ask you a few questions and hopefully we covered a lot for people that are out there, at least getting to the bottom of the fact that um, according to the USGS, the source of these odors is not from volcanic gases coming out of Mount St. Helens or the surrounding area. And uh, I'm glad to get that uh, at least clarified. The mystery still remains of where it's from, and we will certainly be looking into that as well as a number of other people. But Peter, thank you for joining us uh, to just talk this through. Really, really appreciate your time and knowledge. My pleasure. Thanks so much, Greg. And uh, for everybody watching, again, we are live streaming, so sometimes we have the ability here to, to get to these questions and uh, have people like Peter join us to answer some of these questions that a lot of people have, and hopefully we got to some of those. If you have more questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. I, I know you will if you're on YouTube, and uh, let us know, and we'll see if we can get those answered for you. I do have just one other thing. So this is from the uh, Clackamas, or excuse me, the Cowlitz County Emergency Management, a statement that they put out on Facebook that said, we can neither confirm or deny at this time if it is harmful. There have been reports of eye and throat irritation along with headaches possibly related to the odor. At this time, it is recommended that if you encounter the odor at your residence, you close doors and windows and turn off outdoor air sources until the odor is identified. So that's uh, what it said. It also went on to say that it seems like it is dissipating as it's uh, traveling south. The odor was traveling, uh, sounds like from Kelso 
down to the Portland area, but that it was dissipating as it came through. So we'll keep updating on this, and if there's more information that comes through this afternoon, I will come right on here with a live stream and get that to you directly. Otherwise, of course, follow along at kptv.com or all of our social media outlets. So we've got plenty of places for you to stay up to date, and we'll let you know what's happening. But thanks for tuning in for right now. I'm Greg Nibbler. This is Fox 12 Now.